it's Cowboy Jim, uh, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada, in the north. And uh, we have been uh, ravaged lately uh, throughout northern Alberta, Canada, um, with a lot of forest fires. And um, I was watching uh, last night, uh, along about midnight, 1230, I was, I was running the road in the mine hard in, in my haul truck, as I am inclined to do. And and a brother of mine came on the radio and told everybody that it was going to rain. And uh, no one believed him, except me. Uh, I was watching the same storm clouds move in. And, um, and along about 2.33 o'clock, it really started to come down. Uh, by the time uh, an hour or so had gone by, we were fundamentally shut down, running uh, uh, roads were pretty slick, and uh, uh, you're running a little truck that hauls 100 plus ton, they're small compared to the big ones, uh, but but when, when the, the rear end of it is trying to pass you, uh, uh, you, you know it's kind of time to use a little bit of discretion and uh, get get out of doubt and uh, so we did and we shut her down and i had the privilege and the honor of speaking with a brother uh who, who happens to be my supervisor but he also happens to be my friend and uh he he and i we we both uh ran ho uh and uh and he taught me a lot that, that's what people do when they care as they teach, eh? And um, we had a, a pleasant time and uh, ended up getting sent home uh, regular time. Um, but but I didn't work the last hour and a half. I don't even like taking a coffee from someone unless I pay for it. So sitting in a bus or a truck because it's raining, inclement weather, I, I don't really like that. I don't think it's fair to the company. And if, if the company, cha company changed its policy and didn't pay us when it did rain, I'd probably think that was unfair. <laughs> Anyways, uh, tonight, which is a Sunday night, um, the rain carried through, thank God. We have had too many forest fires. We've had a lot of forest fires uh, that have been set by humans intentionally, if you can believe that. And uh, But it seems to be the truth. And uh, I noticed on my comment section uh, that my brother, uh, um, I'll just, I'll say this. He's from Perth, Australia. And he was saying that he appreciated that I had prayed for him and he had uh, somewhat of a recovery, and uh, but now he's bedridden. Um, people, people like me are used to not asking for help. We're used to, uh, not taking something for nothing. We're used to being alone. It's not good, but it's the way it's worked out. Well, I'll tell you this, uh, that brother of mine from Perth, Australia, um, I don't know his situation. I know, I'm pretty sure, he's alone and very, very sick. He says that he is bedridden. That evokes an awful lot of thought from when my younger years. But nonetheless, he's not doing well. And I I know where I'm going to spend eternity, okay? Delusional, though it may well be. I know that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I know because... I fulfilled scripture. I've fulfilled scripture and that I asked God to forgive me and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. 
but I want you to know something. I have been on death's door a few times, and I felt pretty alone, and uh, it's not that good. I, I truly believe it would be better uh, to pass from this life into the next, where you're holding on to the hand of the woman you are madly in love with. Well, actually, it would be better doing anything uh, with the woman whose hand you were holding, whom you were madly in love with. I had an interesting discussion with the Lord a year or so ago, and yet he, he kind of indicated a, a little to me how I may well pass from this uh, life uh, into eternity. And and we talked about that for a while, and I, I wanted to assure him that I would do my best, but that I, I would need an awful lot of help from him. So, in a world where people are tend to be their own gods, where they're taught from childhood that everybody is a winner. I mean, everybody gets a, a trophy just for trying. That's stupid, eh? Like, sorry, that's stupid. I don't want trophies. But if I wanted a trophy, I would work for it. I'd go out of my way to work for it. But let's get down to to what I have been avoiding. And that is my brother in Perth, Australia. I don't know you. But you have shared your heart on my comment section many times. And every single time you did, I thought this man is my brother. And there seem to be similarities between his life and mine. But I want you to know, my brother, if you're going home in the near future to be with God, that you, because you ask God to forgive you, you ask God through the name of Jesus Christ, you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. May not be easy. I remember a few times when I was on death's door, a couple times I thought I was and I wasn't. A couple times I was and I didn't realize it. have an old aunt who's passed, and uh, in her death, uh, her daughter was in the room with her, and uh, the lady who was dying said, the angels are coming. She said to her daughter, don't you see the door? Well, it was a door that my aunt saw in a wall that had no door. And the aunt again said, the angels are coming. Listen, if you have prepared your life in an appropriate manner by humbling yourself and asking God to forgive you, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it does not matter what goes on, what happens. Your name, because of you choosing to ask God, will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and nothing can change that. My brother, if you, uh, you go home in the near future, I'd like you to do a favor for me. I'd like you to look up my mom. Her name is Velma E. Fisher. She married my dad, who was a Martin, when you get to heaven. I'd like it if you could say hello. Tell her 
I've been trying my best. But my brother, you you hang around the entry, eh? Because as rugged as I am, uh, uh, I'll be getting there. Not soon. I jokingly told my young, or oldest boy, I said, uh, he said, when are you going to retire? I said, well, when I turn 80, then I'm going to start another family. Poor guy almost had a heart attack. But anyways, a uh, little too, emo too much emotion here. And I cover emotion with uh, rabbit trails. <sighs> Brother, you're bedridden. Don't, don't, don't you sweat it. Uh, I had a uh, heart surgery, uh, told the uh, surgeons, I said, don't, don't, uh, don't you get upset. Don't you, uh, ruin your supper. If, uh, I should go, I'm only going to be with God. And, uh, same when the big German mayor kicked me. It's not funny dying. It's not funny dying alone. Remember this scripture, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. In life, I have lived to the max, to the full. In death, I anticipate doing the same thing. In eternity, I'll get to see my mom again, my Lord and Savior. My God, might take about two years after I look upon God and his son Jesus. Might take about two years until I can get my face off the ground. I won't be asking him any impertinent questions. I'll just be saying thank you. So, hey, uh, my brother, bedridden or no, your heart, your soul, your spirit. That's between you and God, and you already took care of it. So God bless you. I, I may be a little tired from working night shifts. Gee whiz, a, few much, a little too much emotion here. If you've never been at peace with God, if you have never heard uh, that eternity is determined for you, by you, and you alone. You may well consider saying, which is called humbling, but saying, God, forgive me. I accept that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins. I am having, I am sorry for having lived the way that I have. Help me to live the way you would have me to. God bless you. My brother over in Perth, Australia, you go to be with the Lord when uh, God's ready, not before. You just picture me standing beside you, holding your hand. Son, you've earned my respect, and I give it. God bless you. God bless you, and God keep you. You wait for me. Uh, you hang out around the front gates in heaven. I'll be getting there in about 20 years. After all, I'm only 73. God bless. God bless. Amen and amen.